15. It's in mint condition. This was, I had to get this out of my system. This is really something special. Are you done? Financially, I'm done. <laughs> it's really an addiction. Yeah. Hello Chef Nice Enthusiast, I'm here in picturesque Weert, <laughs> all the way in the south of Holland. I see here three generations of doi nice. Keijiro doi, pizza doi and kazuo doi. This is not something I see every day. Introduce yourself. I'm this knife collector. I only collect doi knives. Hello. I have 15 <laughs> of this knife. Around. This is something special. How does one get interested in this specific maker? There's so many Japanese knives. There's so many interesting makers. Of course, Keiji Doi is considered to be maybe one of the best to ever do it. What is uh, your fascination with Keiji Well, I, I wanted to treat myself to a really, really nice knife. I heard that the Japanese knives were a good investment, blah, blah, blah. Then I was looking for which maker should I buy. Keiji was one of the best. So I found one online. So wait, 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 wait. So you were googling Japanese knives, and then one of the first names that popped up for you was Keiji Doi. It was more like an investment type of search. Which maker should should I buy to have a good investment? So you found out that Keiji Doi was one of the best. One of the best. They, they say. Are you using these knives? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I cannot say to be honest. I was really convinced to buy one of these knives, but they were all out of stock. How can this happen? Like zero web shop had any knives. Three dreaded words of all knife collectors out of. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like more fascinating by how rare these knives were. Eventually, I found a knife in Germany. The fact that this was just sitting there on a shelf in Germany is a surprise, as in it is a sort of their collector's item. Yeah, for sure. But at the other hand, it's not a surprise because in the Western cuisine, we don't often use, use a meat no. for, for a knife like this for, for single devil knives. Sometimes you're just lucky. Once I had this knife, I was like, this is really something special. Immediately hooked on getting more of these knives. You managed to get your hands on something that is so sought after, highly collectible. It is kind of addictive. I got addicted by the rarity and searching. If you start digging, then you make connections with people, search on forums. I bought my second one, which was actually more special than my, than my first one. And then, yeah, well, it, it kept continuing. How long did it take you to accumulate? 13 of these. For six or seven years. The last year, it's really, really hard to get any Kijiro knife. Especially Keizu Doi, you will not find. Keizu Doi has a father named Keijiro Doi, yeah. but of course Keijiro Doi also has a father. Grandpa Doi, Kasuo Doi. He was apparently also a really good knife maker. He actually had two of his knives yeah. as well. I can only imagine even harder than getting your hands on a Keijiro Doi knife. It's not every day that you find someone who is willing to sell like a yeah, super sure. rare piece like this. I can tell that you were kind of basically a fanatic every day searching for doi knives, so I guess you deserve to then also, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hit the jackpot once yeah. in a while, right? you contact people the more you talk the more people know eventually you, you you get more information and you get your hands on more knives did you let this guy know that you purchased this from that you already had all these uh, yeah, uh, yeah i think that's also something that's collectors amongst each other if you sell something you're also not going to sell it to just somebody else Yeah, this is, this is a beautiful
from few different blades. This is really thick, I guess. Really yeah, thick. Time. Really, really thick boy. Very heavy. This is also a Deba. This is exactly the same knife. Wow, this goes with a nice side as well. These are the same nice, but of course every handmade blade is slightly different than the other. This one is a little bit nicer. Maybe it's how it's preserved, but the spine is more polished. Oh, yeah. And the kanji, of course, is different. It's so funny because the other day I was selling a knife to somebody. I spent like one and a half hours helping this guy. So he was quite happy that he finally made a decision. So he made the decision and then I was looking in the back and we had six of them. So I took them all out. And he's like, why are you bringing all these knives out? I made my decision. So yeah, but these are handmade knives. Put them on the table for a little tiny differences in the pattern of the Damascus, the handle, color, like the wood grain, everything was slightly different. Do you remember which was the first one that you managed to snag? This one. So this was the first. I can see my ugly face. <laughs> and it's definitely a mirror polish. One of the things that I've learned is that a Yanagiba is considered to be the king of blades in Japan. Maybe one of the most difficult blade to forge. To make ah, one of these perfectly straight and with the perfect Urasuki and Uroshi, it's apparently not that easy. No. And that's why some are better than others. As you can may expect from somebody considered to be the best, this is a flawlessly made Yanagiba. When I started collecting Japanese knives, I didn't like these knives, to be honest. Why does a knife look like that? I didn't have any reference. They were looking alien to you. Yeah. Because you didn't know how to use it, what they were used yeah, for. For sure. But the first steps in the rabbit hole for me were also not focused on Japanese traditional knives. Before we started filming, we have been talking for a little bit to get to know each other, and it's really funny because we have very similar, kind of backgrounds. similar backgrounds. We both went to the same design school in Eindhoven. Worked for the same company. He <laughs> used to work as a designer for a company that I worked for as a freelance copywriter for six years. So the world is small. Well, the world is small, but when you start collecting knives, the yeah, community yeah. Yeah, it's bigger than I ever could imagine like knife enthusiasts all over the world yeah the, the knife community was also a lot bigger than i expected when i entered it and especially now i'm making youtube videos i double notice it introduces me to guys like you it's a fun journey This was my first knife. The second one I bought was a numbered Kejiro knife. I was Googling like Kejiro every day, every morning in bed. I woke up Googling the same, same search every day. And every time I looked up at Kejiro door, I came across this Pinterest picture yeah. of this patty knife of Kejiro. So I was really focusing on getting a patty knife from Kejiro. This was, I had to get this out of my system. I had to, I had to have one. I always love these key boxes. So this is from the famous Hayate series. Yeah. This is a nice Kenkata. This is one of my, well, they're all favorites, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As it is numbered, it's in mint condition. It's brand new in box, never used. People are always asking about, do you really know it's really a Kijiro Doinata? When you start collecting knives, it's really hard to get the right information. If you hold it, you feel the quality. But when you search online, it's really difficult to determine if it's a Kejiro Doi, yes or no. Boxes will tell you if it's a Takuyuki knife, yes or no. The only thing you can do is a pop of the handle to see if the stamp exactly, is there. Exactly, because on the tag there is yeah. always more kanji, of course. This stamp is also on my Usuba. Half inside of the handle. You get a glimpse of it. You get a glimpse of yeah. it. So how did you get your hands on this one? Japanese Yahoo auction. I bought this one also on auction. I recognized the stamps and the kanji, but I had to pop off the handle. I yelled when I saw the 37. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The so make the thing, yeah, the number 37. 37, yeah. For me, the kanji, if it's really sharp, it really adds some magic to the knife. Exactly. 
And you can literally see every hammer below. Yeah. Blacksmiths, they, they don't do their own kanji, right? They have some makers, for example, Jiro, literally studied engraving kanji for 20 years to be able to do it himself. I think at Sakai Tapenyuku, you have people that forge the steel and then they shape the blade, somebody grinds the blade, somebody puts the kanji on it, somebody puts the handle on it, and those are all different people because they hyper specialized in doing one thing. Every step in the process is done by somebody who is one of the best in doing that particular step in the process of making a knife. But me personally, I am more drawn to guys like Ejiro or Shibebusa or all these people that do everything in-house by themselves from scratch. That is my most romantic background for a knife. But it's me. These type of knives that are strictly made by, let's say, one artisan who does it all is going to be even more rare than it already is. And it's going to be even more valuable to some people than it already is. So yeah, I think you can be very happy with this collection. What's your personal opinion on finishing? You like the mirror polished knives or the... Short answer, I basically like all finishes. I, I do have slight preferences, I think. But is it more like a functional choice than aesthetic choice or...? There's three things important with a knife when I buy them. One thing is, of course, that you have to like it when you look at it. So, of course, aesthetics is one important factor when I buy a knife. Second, is it going to work for me? Will it do the task that I have to do in the kitchen? Does it fit my cutting techniques? Does it work for me? Yeah. And the third is, is it within my budget? With traditional Japanese knives, I usually like a mirror or a kasumi or just a migaki finish. Most of my nakiris, they have kuruuchi finish. I use those knives a lot and in a pinch grip the kuruuchi gives me a yeah, little bit of a grip. A little bit of grip. Kuruuchi knives I like as my workhorse knives basically. And my Damascus knives I use during a private chef gig because those are of course more like show pieces and eye catching and conversation starters when I pull out my troll killer. Oh, oh what is that? I think the least favorite finish for me is just randomly chichi made patterns. I do like a nice hammer pattern but I've never bought a knife because of the chuchime. I bought the knife because of the knife and maybe the maker that made it and it happened to have a chuchime yeah. pattern on it. I really like Nashiji. Some like not all Nashiji finishes I like. Beautiful Nashiji was one of the most uh, Nashiji is that finish that kind of looks like concrete also to me. Nashiji is, uh, I think, the word for pear in Japanese, or maybe it's a pear type in Japan. Mm -hmm. So the skin of that pear is basically... Really this is almost the same as the, this finish, right? No, no, it's, you really literally see like little dents That's in there. Cool. It's like chichime, but then done with a needle. Okay. I like it better if it doesn't look like it's sunglasses. Yeah. It's more random and it has different size of Mm. And, grains. and some of those Nashi finishes are like completely kind of even over yeah. and over late and then it doesn't really do so much yeah. for me. I think in the past half year I started to, I'm not disliking Damascus, but I've seen enough Damascus and I have enough Damascus in my collection, so I'm not looking for more Damascus I, blades basically. I think Damascus nowadays like some sort of trick to make a, a knife look nice like yeah. easily or... The mask to me is more also a way for a really good maker to show what he is capable yeah, of. You know, true. like I mean, the, the river jump is a beautiful example of how a certain decision into making the mask is nice created a, a, a true innovation. I like to believe that I can recognize a special type of the mask and a generic type of Damascus, so I'm not so much interested in the generic types of Damascus anymore. For example, a couple of days ago I was holding in my hands a Shoichi Hashimoto Damascus blade and then Damascus becomes a true art. Yeah. It was a pattern that I've never seen before. It was random, but at the same time you could see that it was planned somehow. It was made with only carbon steel, so the core steel was white and blue steel, the cladding was white and blue steel. Basically two billets of Damascus steel to create one. Mm. You know, then you're not just talking about Damascus blade anymore, and that's definitely not just a trick to make a knife. No, Beautiful. Somebody mastered the art of Damascus and trying to do his own thing with it. The past six months I'm more drawn to the Kasumi 
finish because I really like the haziness of the polish. It's uh, simple and pure, but it took me a while to appreciate the simplicity of a Kasumi finish blades. Mirror polish blades I'm not so much interested in. It's a pain in the ass to keep it mirror polish or it's impossible. You gotta have the time, the interest and the stone. Yeah, no Yaki blade is for me personally like the most suitable knife for a mirror polish. Yeah. It's interesting all these different finishes. You're the new star in the video. <laughs> Are you done? Financially, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my collection to be any bigger. I don't use a knife, so it's just sitting in a box. For me, the ultimate goal is to have a Kijiru Doi mint in box. New, new. This is the thing I'm looking for. It will definitely get harder and harder because I can imagine that even though they are collector items by now, that a lot of people that have Kijiro Doi knives uh, are also using them. So it will be harder and harder to find them brand new in box. Yeah. After the second uh, Kizuo uh, I bought, I'm finished. Considering the 15 Kijiro and Kazuo knives, we spent at least 15k. <laughs> but the good thing about it, these will stay valuable. I hope so. <laughs> keep their value and probably will raise yeah, them. I hope so, yeah. Yeah. If your child has to go to, uh, <laughs> to college, I have to sell some. I'll call you. No, I'm not gonna buy it. No? <laughs> because I'm selling mine because I'm not using it. Then. And I don't buy nice as an investment. The start was to invest and mm. I fall in love with the product, of course, with the knife virus I caught. But investment wise these knives if you keep them they will increase in value it all depends on who is going to buy it of you one day what he thinks or she thinks it's going to be worth them in every collector's world rarity of course is one of the main thing that will drive or, or hype. up yeah hype but in this case there is no hype because he's legit one of the ogs when i bought my first Giro knife i was curious if he was hyped or if he was really making knives mm -hmm. that were deserving the hype and in my opinion they deserve the hype because now I have to and I use them and that's the only way to know if a knife is good mm -hmm. is by using them and they are a joy to use. Plus the way that he works, everything from scratch doing by himself, it all adds up to a value that was in my opinion much higher than I paid for the knife. Recently they increased the price of his knives with 40% I think, but I bought my knives of him for a price that I think were a steal for what you get. Mm. If you are one day decide to sell these knives that you will get at least 30% on top of what you've paid for it. Well let's hope so. Yeah. Most knife collectors, they know this feeling of getting something they really, really want to get their hands on. You know what they say, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Exactly. As soon as you got them, they end up in a box. Yeah, so. <laughs> crazy, crazy, but true. Thank, Thank you for sharing your story, your struggle, your addiction. <laughs> it's really an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs>